Nagaland, a land known for its raw landscapes and rich tribal lifestyle. And within these beautiful valleys, a coming of age revolution is brewing, a piping culture of good coffee. I am Suhas Dwarkanat, a coffee brewer and I am on a journey with the new Hyundai Tucson to explore this interesting story. It's been a two-day drive from a non-traditional coffee growing region down south to one in the northeast, the beautiful Nagaland. I feel ecstatic to be visiting this region because it's not only the coffee production that's growing exponentially but also the specialty coffee cafe scene. I'm headed to meet the founder of Ete Coffee, who has ushered this coffee wave in this region. You've been training. Right, right, uh, right. People. Yes. And then uh, I also understand training was not just a revenue generation model. Yes. Absolutely. Can you tell us tell us about uh, Ete Coffee School? Uh, people are rushing, opening cafes. So as much as I want to get down to the farm level and first train there, I realized this is really important. They're like the main performers on the stage. So no, no amount of hard work that you've put in to the, the entire process chain uh, makes sense if they spoil it here. So we decided that maybe we'll start training the baristas first. And so uh, think about business and uh, it's counterintuitive to think that you are training your competitors in your own industry. But I just thought that if you want to make people the brand in itself, we need to ensure that every single cafe in Naglin, for that matter every single cafe in India, run by the Indian people, run by the Nagalan people, do excellent coffee with proper technical know-how. And that's the only way to attract the global market. We can't be just fighting for a small customer base here in our own local context. We'll have to work together and grow, build that ecosystem. And if we do that, I believe everyone has its own share. With coffee culture in Nagaland coming into its own, there has been a steady rise in demand for high quality coffee beans from the region. I am about to explore a first generation coffee growers farm. Now that you have the farm, you have started off, the trees are young, it's, it's three, four years old now. Um, what next? What, what do you see as the future uh, for coffee farming in uh, Nagaland? Uh, we don't have a major cash crop in the district, so especially for the younger generation, I feel that uh, coffee will be the next big thing, in not only in Kohima, maybe even Nagaland and even for the world also. And this is where I am also uh, venturing into and investing into coffee, looking into the future. So I feel that uh, coffee, many of the youths as well as the upcoming generation will uh, venture more into coffee and it will be, it will be a big thing for us. Situated far away from the mainstream coffee belt of southern India, the coffee grown in Nagaland has stood out in its uniqueness. The higher altitude allows the cherries more time to ripen and absorb nutrients from the tree. And the rich Himalayan soil gives the coffee beans a peculiar fruity aroma with a citrus tinge. Sure. 
show maps. This cup of coffee is as unique and rich as the Naga culture itself and it has musk melon overtones to it and jaggery sweetness in its aftertaste. But what makes it surreal is me having this cup at 6000 feet above sea level where the coffee pundits of the world said coffee cannot be grown. But however the Nagas with their dedication and passion made it happen. As my journey with Hyundai to find the perfect cup of coffee comes to an end, I'm left with gratitude for all the fascinating experiences I've had. From the birthplace of Indian coffee to the latest trendsetter. I've met inspiring leaders and amazing people who are pioneering the story of Indian coffee. And the all new Tucson has been my perfect companion on this journey. It has indeed been my honor to witness such unique stories connected with this beverage that I absolutely love. As for me, with every cup of coffee, I'll be looking for a new experience.